This is a step-by-step -step guide to setting up and operating a timecode show for a DJ. We'll use show control to sync Resolume visuals and Grand MA lighting to pioneer CDJs using timecode. Timecode allows the DJ to have their music in sync with lighting, visuals, lasers, and special effects while using Pioneer DJ decks, even when changing the tempo. Today, I'm at Nightlight Studios in LA, a turnkey production space where DJs can design and dial in their shows. I'm here with Lee Duck, professional lighting designer and programmer, who's programmed timecode shows for artists like Zed, Matt Zoe, Kim Petras, and more. Today, he's gonna to help me demonstrate how to sync lighting and visuals to CDJs for a flawless timecode show. We hope to show you everything you need to know, including the equipment you need, how to set everything up, and best practices for preparing and operating a flawless time-coded sync show. If you're a total beginner and not really sure what time code even is, check out this video to get up to speed. All right, so let's start with the gear. You will need a laptop running Resolume, a MacBook running show control software, a lighting console that supports time code, a supported Pioneer CDJ system, Ethernet cables and network switches, audio interfaces, and audio cables. Before we get into the fun stuff, we need to get organized. It's important for everyone to be on the same page and working with the same information. Make a list of all the songs that you'd like to sync with timecode and assign them an offset. Offsets associate each track with a specific unique timecode. So instead of all tracks syncing starting at zero, track one can start at one hour and track two can start at two hours, for example. This way, you never match the wrong visual to the wrong song or get cross signals. And if you have less than 24 tracks, using the hour value is fine. However, we typically use 15 minute increments. In our experience, any medleys an artist might make uh, will still be less than 15 minutes, and it technically allows for over 90 songs. This headroom helps, especially when there are different variations of songs or tracks you still want to have in your show file just in case. You also need to consider frame rate. The last value of timecode is frames, and if there's a mismatch in frame rate, it can cause skipping and other sync issues. For most live events in North America, you can stick to 30 frames per second, since most screens will be refreshing at a multiple of 30. For other parts of the world, you might choose 25. Just look at your tech specs and stick to a frame rate that works with the particular production. The next thing you need to take care of before the show is to make your visuals and program your lighting cues. We'll cover the creative side in depth in another video, but to explain briefly, timecode visuals are essentially just tightly edited videos that span the whole track and have cool things happening right on beat for key moments in the music. For example, I have this circle hitting on the snare and this strobe during the build up here. You're essentially VJing in advance in a video editing program such as Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve instead of live at the show. We'll talk about how to use these clips inside Resolume in just a bit, so stick around. Now on the lighting side, we now need to program some cues for each song. First off, we create the main stack, which is the bare bones elements of what makes up the song, such as like the intro, verse, chorus, pauses, etc. Then we create the hits for rhythmic elements. So for instance, in the chorus, we have a strobe, and in the drop, we have some strobing beams. So once these cues are created, then we record them to a timeline. We have our main stack, which is like showing all of our elements of the song, first chorus, and then we have uh, all of our bump buttons that are in sync with all of the music. And remember, you don't have to do all time code or all live operated. You can do both. What time coding enables you to do is to focus more on the big picture of the show, which is what really matters. You might only time code sync certain tracks, like an intro, an important new single, or a song that is being captured and recorded live. All right, let's start with setting things up. We'll start with our DJ decks. It's important to set up the CDJs so that they send the correct info to the show control system. Pro DJ Link is the network-based language that Pioneer DJ decks use to talk to each other. Show Control listens to Pro DJ Link and outputs timecode to external systems. To set up the CDJs, connect all of the CDJ decks and DJM mixer to an unmanaged network switch. 
Make sure that any USB sticks and sources from the decks aren't connected. Having USB sticks or anything selected as the source of the deck will disable changing any of the core settings. Long press the menu button, which brings you to the utility page. Under Pro DJ Link, change the Pro DJ Link deck number to correspond to the numbers you want to use with Show Control. The standard varies depending on the artist, but check with the music artist to make sure you're speaking the same language with deck numbers. For instance, one, two, three, and four left to right, or with just two decks using two and three. Next, connect your USB stick with content from the artist. Press source on all of the decks and select the correct source for music. Now we're gonna be doing some networking on stage. Once each deck has a unique deck number assigned to it, connect all of your CDJs to a network switch. Now the CDJ should be set up for show control. And the last step is to run an ethernet line from stage to front of house. Over at front of house, connect the ethernet line running from stage to our network switch. Then connect it to our show control laptop. Timecode audio is generated for us by show control. It will be coming out of the show control laptop via its audio interface and into our Resolume laptop and our lighting console. Next, let's set up show control. Launch show control and check the network tab to make sure you're online and seeing the right number of devices. Then go to the set list tab. This is where you'll add all of the audio files for the tracks that need timecode. And in the details, load the audio file and assign each track the offset from your list. Now, Show Control will recognize if this song is played by the DJ and output the appropriate time code with the proper offset. Double check your audio settings and make sure DAW audio is off. This will cause you some issues. And double check your LTC settings frame rate is set to 30 or whatever you're using. It just has to match across the board. Next, let's set up Resolume. Open up the settings and go to the audio tab. Assign your input and output device to your audio interface. If you don't see it, make sure you've installed the drivers. Set your SEMPTI channels and your SEMPTI frame rate. Make sure this matches your settings in show control. Again, we're using 30 frames per second. Then you can add your video clips to your show file. Set their transport mode to SEMPTI and assign their offsets in the clip details panel. A couple of pro tips for you that will help in your performance. If you duplicate your clips and set the copy to relative, this will allow you to switch to a clip that is not tied to timecode so you can engage the next track without any jumps. Duplicate it once more and set this to normal timeline transport mode with some cues set in case everything shits the bed, you've got a backup that doesn't rely on timecode at all. All right, now it's time for lighting. So first, connect the timecode audio line to the back of the lighting console. Once you are sending timecode signal, you should see it counting a digital clock. For GranMA2 software, you will see a timecode clock in the timecode pool object as well as the clock object. First, let's review the timecode settings for MA2. If you're on an MA2 console, um, you're going to want to push the Setup button. If uh, you're on MA3, you're going to press the Menu button. So from there, click on Timecode and review your settings for each. You'll notice there's uh, pre-roll and after-roll. Pre-roll is how many seconds the console will receive a valid signal of timecode until timecode actually starts working. After roll, on the other hand, is how many seconds the console will run synced to timecode even after the timecode signal is lost. To set individual timecode offsets for each song, press the edit button and then click on the timecode pool object associated with your song. Then press the yellow ball in the top left corner of the window and set the correct offset, timecode slot, and other applicable settings. So there's many ways to configure the software. If you are interested in more lighting-centric videos, let us know. Let's put it all together and see how this flows during the show. The DJ loads a song on the decks. Show Control recognizes that song. It's in our set list and it knows our offset. In Show Control, ensure that the deck is linked to a layer and sending to the master. In Resolume, the VJ clicks the corresponding clip. And on the lighting console side, make sure that you have all the songs in play mode. 
For MA2, press the go button and click the songs to activate them. So the song starts playing, time code is sending, the clip starts playing along, you fade it in and Now you know how to prep and operate a timecode show. Thanks Lee for helping demonstrate and offering your space for the studio. If you like this video, be sure to check out the rest on the channel and come back later for more videos. Peace.